Hi, Mark. How are you? Good, mate. How are you? <laughs> it's great to see you. We had a good old chat today, didn't we? Yeah, we did indeed. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look, um, we'll get straight into it because there's a bit of stuff to go through. Yep. And tonight we're going to do the arms and the hands, those parts of the body, the arms and the hands. Yep. And we're up to 30 and 31, it is. These are all the different parts we've gone through so far. And as we go through it, we find teaching it. You look up the, nut, the, the word, and then you find in the scripture around it, there's teaching, isn't there? Oh, yeah. It's very, very interesting. Mm. Wasn't that a blowout last week, eh? Oh, yeah. About the, yeah, about, wait till you see what the field is tonight. <laughs> Comes into the field tonight. Now, uh, well, let's get straight into it. It's, Mark num uh, chapter 9, and this is the arms. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Let's go. So we'll start off by saying, by making a statement, that when Yahushua was here, he did the most amazing things. Everything was phenomenal, incredible and amazing. And he's saying all these things to the, the, the emissaries that, and they didn't understand what he was saying. Like many people today, you can talk to them about Torah, but because it's hidden, they can't understand it. It has to be revealed to them. So we have to become able as emissaries of the word to actually open it up so that it's real. So his spirit's got to come through us to reach people, you know. And who did he hang with all the time? He was hanging with the grotty people. and They were all complaining that he was hanging with the lowly, you know. Yeah. So that's the sort of people you'll uh, encounter when you go out caravanning. You're going to, because, you know, they call it trailer trash, you know, and there's going to be people there that um, find it really hard to make it in society and, and, and work and achieve, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, you haven't been able to, he hasn't let you achieve. You, you've wanted to go in there and achieve, but your interests have been in other places. You've wanted the Torah. And so you haven't gone for that madness to achieve and, you know, make millions. But the both of you did want that. Uh, you were wanting that, but he wouldn't let you have it because he wants you for his purpose. And I think going out together as a family you're going to fulfil a lot of those purposes. You're going to see a lot of reasoning why he wouldn't let you. Because you're his, you know, both of you. You're not your own. And this is the lesson we have to learn. We have to come into his will. He wants us his way and he's going to do it. Have you ever thought of it like that? Not quite, no. You know, I think that will give you a bit of a relief. If you can receive it, see, I'm saying this to you, I believe this with all my heart, but if you can't receive it, well, then you can't receive It's like talking to someone that can't receive the Torah. Mm. To me, it makes perfect sense what's yeah. happened to you. Yeah. Because you know, I, I know you're a fabulous hairdresser. You know, you're wonderful cutter and colorist and you're so quick, and yet you, he wouldn't let you, make the, the big time, you know what I mean? He's kept you away from it. It's not very nice, the big time anyway, mate. That's pretty shallow. So, you know, I think the experience that you have to go out and meet his people and talk to his people, he's chosen, he wants them reached. And I think, you know, that's where it's at. So while I was here on earth, he was doing and saying the most amazing things and people were just flabbergasted with his wisdom and his consciousness, you know, and the emissaries were blown out. So let's start. Chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, wasn't it? Yes. 
Mark chapter 9. And he said to them, Truly I say to you that there are some standing here who shall not taste of death at all until they see the reign of Elohim having come in power. Now that's a blowout. You know, Lou's got a whole seminar on that, hasn't he? So that's a blowout when he's doing all the and saying all these amazing things, you know. And if anybody's interested, they can go and check that. What would that be called, Mark? Well, there's, he's got articles uh, called The Two Witnesses and our brother Yehukanon. Is, is Yehukanon dead? Or yeah. is Yehukanon still alive? Is Yehukanon yeah, still right. alive? And there's also Torah Talk uh, 26 from Patmos with Love. Okay, there are brothers and sisters. If you want to go and look at that, you'll find that a blowout. Because I think through his emissaries today, he is still saying and doing, and I emphasise the word doing, amazing things in this world today. He's still alive and moving. And he has plans, and they're all coming about. Verse 2, And after six days, Yahushua took Kepha and Yaakov and Yohanan and led them up on a high mountain alone by themselves, and he was transformed before them. His garments became glittering, exceeding white like snow, such as no launderer on earth is able to whiten. Now, see how they bring it down to washing clothes? No launderer on earth is able to whiten it. Here again, this is our third verse, and look at the amazing things he said already. They are, and done, they are amazing. I had no idea it said launderer in the scriptures. I, uh, yeah. I didn't know that they would call them that. And what about when you're reading about King David and it talks about mowing the lawn? Really? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. I wonder what they it's had. A... Two-stroke victor or something? You can look that up, Mark. <laughs> Verse 4, And there appeared to them Eli Yahu with Moshe, and they were talking with Yahusha. Um, now, it's very interesting, that part, because it says um, a possible explanation, Moshe represents the law of it and Eli Yahu represents the prophets, which is a term used for the pre-Messianic scriptures. So these two stand beside Yahusha, all three speaking in unity. It's interesting. Yes. <laughs> Another amazing thing happening. And that's three verses. <laughs> People aren't awake to see this. What, what, what are you laughing at? What, tell me. It's what you said. Three verses. <laughs> how, how amazing is this already? Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 5. And Kepha responding said to Yahusha, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here and let us make three booths, one for you, one for Moshe, and one for Eli Yahu. Because he did not know what to say, for they were exceedingly afraid. <clears throat> now we just read it, but we don't look at it. These guys were packing it. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't you pack it? Yeah, freaked out. You know, they freaked out at this thing happening. And you're thinking of the poor old washing person trying to launder the clothes to get them that white and they're freaking out because you can't launder them that white. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, verse 7, and there came a cloud. Here's another thing happening. And there came a cloud overshadowing them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, the beloved. Hear him. Okay, you're freaking out, and then the cloud comes over, and this happens. <laughs> what are you going to do? What do you think? I mean, we just read it like, you know, religious idiots, and but we don't see the, reality, the amazingness of it all. Yeah. Verse 8, and suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but only Yahushua. 
Okay. <laughs> what did we go through there, guys? <laughs> what was that? That was amazing. Verse 9, and as they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them not to relate to anyone what they saw till the son of Adam has risen from the dead. Okay. Uh, the son of Adam has risen. You're not allowed to say it until what? What's that? And they kept this matter to themselves, debating what the rising from the dead meant. What the hell is this? Why don't we just go through? We're going to shut up and not tell anyone. <laughs> what are you laughing at, huh? <laughs> you. <laughs> With well, you. aren't you there? Yeah. It's mad. Verse 11. Yeah. And they ask him, saying, Why do the scribes say to Eli, say that Eli, Yahoo, has to come first? And he said to them, Eli, Yahoo, indeed, having come first, restores all matters. And how has it been written concerning the son of Adam that he is to suffer much and be despised? Okay, they're going. Right, yeah. Mm. Here he goes again, guys. <laughs> but I say they didn't know who the son of Adam was, see? Did you know that? No. They didn't know well, they didn't know the scripture, did they? They were religious. Yeah. And he's just quoting scripture out of teaching them, you know. They're learning and learning and learning as everything he says. And it's old, test old uh, messianic scriptures coming forth. He's revealing the prophecies to them. And they hadn't received the spirit yet, so they're fishermen and having a life and getting drunk. And, yeah! You know what I mean? And this guy comes along and all this is happening. They're just fishermen. They're not stupid. They know the Torah, but, you know, because they've been going all their life. But was it real to them? Probably not. Yeah, it was, you know. And here it is real. And then having trouble digesting this Yahusha guy, you know, he's a serious dude. But we can't say no because look what he's doing. You know, then we read all this and we have to make up our mind, is this true or not? And there we are, we've got all our computers and everything, so forth, life and houses and blah de blah de blah Is this true or not? Do I think this is true? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but how can it? It's so exciting. It's so exhilarating, so amazing. Yeah. Right, verse 13, but I say to you that even Eli, Yahoo has come. Aha, the guys are saying. And they did, not, they did to him whatever they wished, as it has been written of him. So he's quoting the scripture, and they didn't know that it was um, Johan and the Immerser. They didn't, obviously didn't know, but maybe they could catch on or maybe they didn't. But, gee, this guy's crazy. But I, I love him. <laughs> I don't understand everything he says. They're saying to each other, you know. Verse 14. And coming to the taught ones, he saw a large crowd around them, scribes disputing with them. Okay, we're going into, into another circumstance. You know how you see my life? I'm in trouble all the time, Mark, yeah. aren't I? Yeah. And all these things, Rehusha's around all this stuff. And immediately when all the crowd saw him, they were greatly astonished. And running near, greeted him, how are you, are you master? How are you? Oh, how are you? Oh, how are you? How are you? How are you? Because <laughs> yeah. they've been naughty, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. And he asked the scribes, what are you disputing with them? Meaning he's talking to the scribes. What are you dispute, disputing with the emissaries? Yeah? yeah. Isn't that it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Verse 17, and one of the crowd answering said, one of the crowd, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a dumb spirit. 
So okay. the, the subjects changed. Yeah. We're going somewhere else, mm. you know. Mm. And wherever he sees, and whenever he seizes him, he throws him down, and he foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth, and he wastes away. And I spoke to your taught ones, and they they that they should cast him out, but they were not able. So this is what's going on. This is the dispute between the scribes and the emissaries. This is what's going down. So it's being revealed. Yahushua says, what are you disputing about? Here it all comes out. And he answered him and said, oh, believe me, oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. So they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into convulsions and falling on the ground, he rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Now, if you see that sort of behaviour, what is it? Demon. Yeah. Or an evil spirit. So they don't do this today with people. They don't, because they're in unbelief, they have to pander to the spirits carry on. And they have all these scientific medical reasons why. But that behaviour, is it not? Demonic. An evil spirit? Mm. Yeah. And he asked his father, there's the guy writhing on the ground, Yahushua's not worried, not concerned. He's just going, dealing with what he has to deal with. Look what he's dealt with already. Look at the amazing things that are happening in his life. How long has he been like this, he says, in concern and consideration to the father. Imagine if one of your little boys had this happen to him. Yeah. And he said from childhood. So he's a young man and from childhood he's been going through this possession. How horrific for the father, for the parents. And the father's loving him. And often he, he has thrown him both, sorry, often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. So that just like evil spirits want to do to all of us, they want to destroy us. They want to destroy mankind. But Yahushua's not letting it. But if it is at all possible, if it is at all possible for you, have compassion on us and help us. Can you feel the heart? Imagine if it was your boy, Mark, mm. suffering. Mm. And Yahushua said to him, if you are able to believe, all is possible to him who believes. Meanwhile, you've got the disciples standing there checking all this out after what they've been through. And there's Yahushua talking to the dad about believing and the kids rolling around the ground and screaming and frothing at the mouth and everything. Yahushua's having a conversation with his dad and he's saying, if you can believe. So if we will believe, things can happen. But the body is not believing how it should be and they're not listening to Yahushua how they should be. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, I believe, Master, help my unbelief. He suffered for his son, watching his son over all that time. And he's just crying. And look at Yahushua. And when Yahushua saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, You deaf and dumb spirit, I order you, come out of him and never enter ever again into him. Wow. And crying out and convulsing him much, it came out of him and he became as one dead. So that many said straight away, He's dead. He was dead. He's dead. There's no belief in what's actually happening. They just, just want to declare everything straight. Oh, this, oh, that, oh, box it. Put it in a box, you know. Who should won't be put in a box because he is who he is and does it how he will and he is doing it. 
But Yahushua, taking him by the hand, lifted him up and arose, and he arose. And when he came into a house, his taught ones asked him separately, why weren't we able to cast him out? And he said to them, it is impossible for this kind to come out except through prayer and fasting. So if there's going to be believers that want to pray and fast and believe, there's the key to see things happen. There are people in the body that will be gifted with this and things will happen. And sometimes anyone can be gifted with it and it can happen for them. But there's a prerequisite, a bit of prayer and fasting. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Verse 30, and going from there they passed through Galil and he, and he did not wish anyone to know, for he was teaching his taught ones and said to them, the son of Adam is being delivered into the hands of men and they shall kill him. And having been killed, he shall rise the third day. Aha, uh -huh, here he goes again, they're saying. He's telling us all this stuff. Look what we've been through and look what he's saying now. But they did not understand the word and they were afraid to ask him. <gasps> we can't ask what that means. Goodness me. But aren't we blessed that we can see it? They're really blessed that we can see this. But I guess not everybody sees this, do they? They read the scripture like that, don't they? You know when you go to a Catholic church and the priest is up there and they all talk like it's dead. It's like it's dead. You know, the word hasn't got, they make it dead and they're the wrong words anyway. Verse 33, and they came to Kephanahim and having come in the house, he asked them, what was it you disputed among yourselves on the way? Mm ha! -hmm. Here he goes again. And they were silent, for on the way they had disputed with one another, who is the greatest? <laughs> <laughs> who is the best among them? Yeah. Who's the closest to Lou White? <laughs> Who's the best friend of Lou White? Wouldn't have a clue. Who wants to be his best buddy? Yeah. But we're not going to tell him we want that. We can't say it. But we, we all want to be there and be his best buddy, don't we? <laughs> we all want that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And sitting down, he called the 12 and said to them, Ah, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. So that actually means if you want to be wise and the top dog, you have to become the last, the least. Now that's a tall order. To have no ego, to lay down and let him totally have you and become the least amongst everybody. Not looking for attention. Yeah. yeah. What are you laughing at, mate? Oh, just. Uh, tell me, hey, tell me. I want to. Amazing what you're saying. Yeah. Hey? Just amazing what you're saying. It's true. What? So true. Yeah. Yeah. We got the giggles tonight. It's good. <laughs> That's lovely. That's the joy of the word. See. Yeah. <clears throat> now he called the twelve and said to them, "If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be last." And of all, and the servant of all. So that means you're going to, someone kicks their toe, you're first there with a bandage. <laughs> Thank you, Risha. <laughs> <laughs> and you're humbling yourself, putting yeah. the bandage on their toe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Someone drops something, you're over there and you're picking it up. Mm. Or they just say, I oh, don't worry, Mark will do it. And they walk out and leave the mess. Yeah. 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 Who wants to go there? Who wants to do that? All those gnats are out there fighting. Can you see them taking the word as it really says and becoming this? Because this is the 
path. You have to be willing to walk this path. How many people have you seen come into our home and do the things they've done? How they've treated us? You know? You learn your lessons. You learn. This is how you learn by going through these experiences. You know? So that's how the whole body should be behaving. That's how we should be treating each other. It's very simple, isn't it? Very simple. Or clear, I should say. Mm. Well, who mm. wants to bend down and pick it up? Mm. No one. Mm. No one. Who wants to help instead of going home watching telly? Who wants to help clean up? Mm. Who wants to sweep and mop the floors? Mm. You know? Victoria used to make about five loaves of bread and do all beautiful sandwiches. You'd have them come in off the street and they'd drop the coffee and the tea and the sandwiches and be all squashed into the salon floor because, you know, we opened the salon up for the meetings and it would just be a stinking mess. And this, you know, then you have to sit up and talk to people and everything 12, 1 o'clock, they're leaving. And you either you do the basic clean-up, the next morning you get up and you go out and uh, clean up. Or what we had to do, we had to get from um, Darlinghurst over to Manly, public transport, to go to the circus and go and worship and then go up and see our parents because that was the right thing to do. And we'd walk all the way and then Dad would drop us back to the, the bus and we'd get home home to um, Wynyard at about um, oh, 6.30, then we'd walk up to Darlinghurst from Wynyard and then we'd have to clean up the mess and then reset the cell on up for the next day of trading. Yeah, we did that week after week after week. And that was how Max taught us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we learnt a lot about serving. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't um, keep it together all the time. And there was this guy that was coming onto Victoria and he was, his name was Chris, and he had an all pussy skin here. And he was just like an abominable creature and I judged him. I was a Christian then. <laughs> I wouldn't do it now. But I went and called him outside and I had Victoria and everyone in the car and I just laid into his head with my fist. <laughs> That's when we stopped the meetings at that place. And he couldn't do anything. We jumped in the car and there was a, a big hotel next door, um, you know, a motel, hotel where you stay, and he's screaming and running and, and telling them, there they are, there they are, they bashed me up and all this sort of stuff. And, and the cops came and we were just driving, there they're going up there, get them, get them. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. You know, a lot of the pastors used to say, oh, five minutes off. Father, just give me five minutes off. I think I took five minutes back then. Yeah. <laughs> but I regret it. It's not a good thing to do. Yeah. But, you know, you can take so much because of just using and abusing, using and abusing. You have to understand the balance of how you are serving, you know, and the people that you are serving in the process that's happening. You know what I mean? We have to do all that for free. Then we had to spend, we had to pay tithes, you know, on top of it all. Oh, it was very difficult. <laughs> okay, so, you know, you've got to get to that place where you're willing to serve the right way. Not the way we did, but the right way. Right, so he said that to them. Wow, that's a clanger, and all the guys are going, hmm. Yeah, look what we were talking about before we, 
before we sat down with him. And he must have known what we were talking about. How does he know? He knows, doesn't he? Yeah. He's just did you know, these amazing things. And he took a little child and set him in their midst and talk, taking him in his arms. That's the word we're looking at, arms. Isn't it interesting what comes with arms? Yep. Yeah. In Yahushua's arms, a little child. And he said to them, where are we going now, they say? Whoever receives one, one such little child, one of such little children in my name receives me. So you've got to receive them like children. And whoever receives me receives not me. And whoever receives me receives not me. You read on, didn't you? <laughs> but the one who sent me. Yeah. So you're actually getting Yahuwah in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. He is Yahuwah, in other words. And verse 38, and Yohanan said to him, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow us. So we're right there, aren't we? Yeah. Aren't we? Yeah. Father, we're right. We're right, aren't we? Yahushua, and Yahushua said, do not forbid him. Oh, don't they die in the heart. These lessons, oh, we've done it before the time. We thought we were so smart and clever. Who is the greatest? <coughs> For no one who works a miracle in my name is able to readily speak evil of me. Okay? That would be right, wouldn't it? Excuse me. Look what I'm doing in the next verse. <laughs> For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you are of Messiah, truly I say to you, he shall by, he shall by no means lose his reward. What's the reward, Mark? Well, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You don't have to say anything. Verse 42, That's good. <laughs> and whoever causes one of these little ones to, who believe in me to stumble, that's where my favourite scripture comes in, Mark, woe unto you hypocrites, scribes, Pharisees, leaders, you stand in the door, you won't go in yourself and you won't help those that are wanting to enter in. So that's what people are doing in the Messianic movement, standing in the doors saying, we have the knowledge, we are the right one, we are the real tribes, this is the way. The way is open for everybody, guys, everybody and anybody. And if you stop anyone, look what happens. It is better for him if he... If a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. What a horrible death. But that's better to happen to you than you stand in the way of one of these new babes coming in to Israel. And no one has the right to stand there and lord it over people. That's what Christianity is. That's Muslim. That's all of them. But that's not Nazarim. That's not Messianic. That's the wrong behaviour. And the body has filthy, disgusting behaviour. And they will not stop. And that's why these things have to be said. They need to stop and work on themselves because they haven't got what they're saying they have. It's full of palaver. And he's not going to put up with it. Verse 43. And if your hand makes you stumble, cut it off. So if you're doing something with your hand that you shouldn't be doing, cut, off. cut your hand off. <laughs> For it is better for you to enter life crippled than having two hands 
to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And the guys are going, oh, where's it going now? That's me. Oh, I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Oh, my goodness, I feel so wretched. I'm going into the fire. I'm going to go into the fire. He knows he can see me. What am I going to do? Verse 45. And if your foot makes you stumble, cut it off. Yeah, if you don't wear shoes, you stumble, cut it off. <laughs> if you don't wear shoes. <laughs> yeah, really. And you kick your toe and you keep doing it. Yeah. It's no good saying thank you, Father, you know what you're doing, yeah. is it? No. Okay. Bring a lot to this table. It is better for you to enter into life crippled, mate, than yeah. having two feet to be thrown into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. You've got to have a sense of humour. Where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Oh, this guy is so heavy, they're saying. Oh, how are we going to cope with this? Oh, I'm doing all these things. There's no way out. I'm going into the fire. Oh, I'm still going to follow him and see what happens because it's so exciting. It's so amazing. I don't want to miss out on anything. Verse 47. <coughs> and if your eye makes you stumble, pluck it out. If my eyes are watching things that they shouldn't be watching and I know and they're just controlling me, my eyes, it's all my eyes' fault, not me, I'm better off to pluck them out. It is better for you to enter the reign of Elohim with one eye than having two eyes to be thrown into the fire of Gehenna. Oh, the guys, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Oh, what's the worm? What's the worm? The worm signifies the exclusion of the hope of restoration forever and ever. There's no hope of rest restoration. That's what the worm means. It signifies that. Oh, there's no hope for me. I'm lost. Now, verse 49, <coughs> and the guys are saying, oh, look at this. Where did you, get, everyone... where did you get that information from? Why? I just want, we need to know where that information came from. Uh, why? It's not a footnote, is it? No, it's not a footnote. It's one of my notes, though, that I looked up. Uh, is it trustworthy? That I prepared for off the cuff. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> off the cuff. I'm sorry that I prepare for off the cuff, but a lot of this stuff is also off the cuff, even though it's prepared. <laughs> it Colin, Colin, my darling. Work that out. How are you going, Colin? Yeah. Lovely to see you again, mate. Okay. For everyone shall be seasoned with. Fire, seasoned with fire. Yeah. Season means times, doesn't it? A season, not seasoning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> but everyone shall be seasoned with fire. Yeah. What does that mean to you, Mark? Because the guys are just going... What's he talking about now? What's all this? Because they're not filled with the spirit. No. It's blokes, you know, watching the footy. Yeah. <laughs> well, seasoned with fire means you're going to have uh, seasons in your life. <laughs> you're going to go through seasons in your life where there's just incredible fire and pressure and um, chat, I guess well, maybe not necessarily chastisement, but fire as in 
in order to, to heat up to... Oh, oh, you're so nice. What happens if you put your hand in the fire, Mark? You get burnt. Okay. How does it feel when you Ag take it out? Have you had a burn with a hot iron or the blow dryer? Yeah, yeah. Put your finger on the stove? Yeah. How long does that take to heal up? Yeah, ages. And how hurty hurt hurt is it? Yeah, agony. Painful. <laughs> Well, you know what the blacksmith told me? Don't I told you. Yeah. What? Uh, don't put cold water on it, put hot water on it. No. No? You get your lighter and you take it and you hold it close to it so it reburns it and then you don't have any pain. So brothers and sisters, take it from the blacksmith. If you get burned, you've got to go back in the fire. To get purified, don't you? Yeah. So you don't mm. get the pain. You get used to the pain. Mm. So for everyone shall be seasoned with fire. And every offering shall be seasoned with salt. Salt. Salt metaphorically speaks of the believer's character and condition. Metaphorically, salt speaks of the believer's character and condition. You know the trees, we're trees, aren't we? The condition of the trees, what sort of fruit the trees are bearing, the quality of the fruit and the condition of the tree, whether the tree has been fertilised correctly and looked after and watered and you know, cared for. <clears throat> you can't just put them out there and leave it in the weather and think, oh, yeah, we're going to have a great crop. No, each tree has to be looked after virtually, individually. <coughs> so any fruit that you're going to bear... I mean, it has to be looked after. <clears throat> You've got to look after them for them to be the right fruit. <clears throat> and me. I think that's enough. Yeah, he didn't finish the chapter. Oh, salt is good, but if the salt becomes tasteless, how shall you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace among one another. So obviously you have to have the tasty word in you and you have to know how to deliver that word. <clears throat> now, as you see me, brothers and sisters, talking to you, I'm, you know, having a bit of fun and and bringing the truth as well. But if I'm dealing with a client in my salon or I'm talking to somebody else, the scripture tells me to be as they are. So we have to learn how to become like they are so we can communicate. Get in the same mood if a client comes in and they're down. Well, you don't come out and ah! You get in the same mood and you're concerned. You talk to them and you love them and you lift them up. You make them feel good. You put yourself aside. How many of those brothers and sisters are out there nitpicking? <clears throat> you know, I saw Adam said, you know, this, this isn't um, uh, the new... A uh, thing you've got there, got going. You know what's it called? What Phyllis started? Oh, the yeah, the, the love, love in not no, it's Adams. Um, yeah, the Facebook page, the the forum <coughs> for people yeah. to, for people to <laughs> meet. Natrium connections or something. Yeah, yeah. And there's some dame there with a little blue hat and all flowers on it, and she's talking about Adam said not to. It's not a place to sell stuff. It's a place to communicate. And she's saying, how is this, Adam? Is this okay? 
and then you get, roll down her Facebook page and there's a big model of a hat that she's created and designed and she's selling them. They will not listen. The messianic people will not listen. They have their own agendas, their own mindset, and I don't think they'd even see the word like we've went, gone through it tonight because it's really serious what he's saying to us. But everybody is into their, so, their own agenda and if you pick them up on something, they hit the roof. Well, there has to be a big change in the body. We all have to come to the one mind. We all have to have the same understanding. And I just wish to heaven everybody would get it together and get the right names together. Put your pettiness aside and get the right names together. Get everything together. Get the love together. We shouldn't be double-crossing each other. And they get onto one of those forums, they're all just trying to lift themselves up like the disciples here. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? Well, they didn't have the spirit then. <clears throat> You know, if you're acting like that, you're childish and you're bickering and fighting amongst yourselves. And all this is going on in the airwaves. Don't you think Yahushua can see? How the body is just a crippled, sick mess and it needs to become clean and loving and kind and considerate and concerned. If you live like this, he will look after you. But he won't look after you if you're not prepared to be obedient to his word. Obedience is worship. So Torah should be dominant in your life day and night. And we do love you out there, brothers and sisters, but we are just like a big festering cancer destroying the body. And the scripture says if you destroy the body, oh, we were going to do that tonight, but we haven't got time. I'll do that next week. All right. <clears throat> okay, what's your um, input, Mark? It's time for me to sit back and hear how you feel. You're part of the body, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think of tonight's word? Oh, I <laughs> I just think it's wonderful. It's uh, to read it with life is so important. To read, it, to see it as it is, uh, it's amazing. I, l I look forward to being able to just dive, you know, just be able to read it for what it is. I have a plan to go there. Um, it's just so wonderful when you go through it, particularly when two or more are gathered. It's. Uh, it's wonderful just because it's wonderful, but when, when there's a few of us, it's just, uh, it's just amazing. I'm just speechless. It's, uh, you got the word, and then you got, you know, the body. You got the word, and then you got Facebook. You got the word, and you got, you know, all the forums that you surf through and see, and you just go, this is just so boring. I haven't been hardly on there the last few days. It's just so sickening and just so boring the way that everybody goes on. And this is just wonderful, you know. And he's amazing. He's just you, think we might, you think we might get 20 hits on this one? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> all this stuff is for a future time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was fun, though. Oh, that yeah. was fun to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We well, were, yeah. It is slow. It is slow building, but that just goes to show that, uh, you know, the closer you get to the truth, the less people you're going to get interested. So, so. Don't you think people would be interested to do what we talked about tonight? Don't you think they'd get on their high horses and say, Wow, that's me. Wow, I've got to change. Don't you think they'd be like that? No. You, no. What do you think they'll think about what we said? We're, we're just 
base, silly men, silly people. They're just silly. <laughs> Just, they're having too much fun. <laughs> you know. Oh well, mm. we tried, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They can't tell us we don't love you, though, can they? No, they can't. You know? No. What must it have been like for him walking around? Yeah, with all those religious people. Seeing, seeing everyone in the state they're in. Mm. It's his creation and he came down to love them. And he only came to that part of the world. But his word has gone all around the world. What he did then, it's phenomenal. Just yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Did you know he was that phenomenal, Mark? No. <laughs> no. That's always, re always an ongoing revelation to me. It always surprises you. Just when you Doesn't think, he? Just when you think, not that you'll ever understand him, but just when you think you're understanding the patterns and how he flows and the process, it all goes, balls up and just changes. <laughs> you, know, you just think, where did that come from? That's a, you're not allowed to do that. That's not the rules. <laughs> That's it. He <laughs> changes the rules. doesn't change the Torah. He changes, you know. Them are our rules. Yeah, it changes, yeah. Our, our rules. Yeah. Into his rules. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, he did very well. It was <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny. Hey, mate. Oh, it's amazing. Mm. It's <laughs> what are you actually thinking about? Just the... Sad and sorry state the body's in. It's just been an amazing series. This, <laughs> where are we? The arms, arms and uh, hands. Yeah, what, really? that was the end, was it? No, that was the arms. Yeah, and we're only Picked up, um, not even probably halfway. But it's just so sad when you look at the body, so sad. But in another way, would you want to be all that, go back to that? Or do you want to continue up the path? Continue up the path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then you have to bend over and pick it up, mate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you? Mm -hmm. You've got to go all the way that he wants you to. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I hope this is a blessing to you and that you can feel the love of Yahusha coming through this study, through his wonderful word, revealing who he really is, revealing his power and his love. Look at the compassion he had and that father came up crying and all this screaming and carrying on, this crowds around. Yahushua's just focused on what he's saying. He said, how long has the boy been like this? Oh, he was probably crying, Yahushua, you know? And seeing the father's love and, and his belief, and because he believed in Yahushua, that's it, mate, you're getting it. You're going to get your son back. Bang, out you come. Yeah. Yeah. Whammo. Yeah. Amazing. Now, we want, to, we want to say goodnight to you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for being with us. And bless your hearts. Bless your hearts so much. Good night. Good night. <laughs> so now, Marky Mark, what do you want to say? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Just uh... they're all gone now. The audience is gone. It's just us. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't giving my freedom up for nothing. So that's just like a. You're just a dog. You're just slaving away as a dog, and you. You don't. What are you talking about? Who are you talking about so I can understand you? The whole pack of them. 
the whole pack of them. Anybody, you know. Two, <laughs> the whole pack of them. I, <clears throat> it's not actually anybody else's fault what I've realised. Yeah. Um, because everybody's going through their own process and generally considering themselves. So that's where I got it from. Vines Concordance. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I just realized this week that, uh, I don't know, it's just like, Oh, you've been talking to me for 20 years, and even when we were in that room for eight or nine years about how you function and how you who should moves and where you should and shouldn't go. And, and But just this week, just like somebody switched, flicked the switch, and I could just see how I looked through, I guess, Yahusha's eyes maybe. And I just thought... What did you see? How you looked? I just felt sick. I just thought, you know, there's this shell because I'm just a shell, and he's like half the stuff I, I hardly feel like I've learnt or done. He just poured poured all this stuff into it so that this <coughs> like I can do stuff, and well, it's not me, it's him. But I'm just saying, I'm just got all these stuff that I can do and talents, and here I am pandering to people who, and just coming under people and thinking are, I'm, you a lobster? are you a lobster or a muscle in the shell? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I just... I wonder if the humour there was getting heavy, mate. <laughs> I just... It's not about anybody else. It's about the fact that I had run myself down so much and thought that I was so little in the body and then it just dawned on me and you know, this isn't an arrogant realisation, this is just a realisation that I haven't seen anybody in the body out there doing what I can do, why the hell am I feeling like nothing, you know, why aren't, you know, I'm here trying to be lovely and humble and suck up to people and, and just be trying to make the airwaves nice and fill in all the gaps that they on the, all the awkward silences that when they don't want to communicate because they're too rude. Um, and I thought, why hasn't anybody shown me that courteous courteousness? You know, I can count one or two people that that would show that courteousness. I know half of them don't know how to, but instead of realizing that and being confident in that and letting Yahusha flow through that, I've been letting it just chip away at me. A little bit more angrier, a little bit more angrier, you know, um, until I realised just who I am in the body. You know, no, nothing in particular, same as everybody else, but just I'm not giving up my freedom for nothing now, mate, you know. It's just I see the confidence that you have and you know you're nothing, but when you... Hey? I'm glad to be nothing. Hey, that's it, Mister Nothing. That's right. I haven't I don't been be anything. No, I haven't. I've been. Trying to serve. Yeah, that's it. You know, I've had it all upside down. I've been trying to be something, but but thinking I'm nothing, and it's the opposite. I yeah. don't. I don't want to be anything now, but I realise I'm. I've got what I've got, and I'm happy with what I've got. Yeah. And I'm happy for you. You should use it however you want. Yeah. And I don't have to suck up to people anymore. I just want to love them. Because um, I've seen the last month or so, just seen closer looks at how you've interacted with people, and I thought sometimes when you say things or do things, I, I would think, oh, I thought that, or I thought of that, or just look how ha instead of getting drawn into the drama, drawn into the heaviness of it, you just have fun. And I just thought, and you just love them, and you just love just breaks down and gets rid of strongholds and gets rid of heaviness, and it's just love. <laughs> It's like you're above it, but you're not above the person. You're just not affected by what they're affected by. And everybody's constantly trying tentacles, trying to draw you in with their tentacles, and you don't get drawn in for nothing, mate, because it's your freedom. Yeah, that's, that's the right way to think. Hey? That's the right way to think, and then you can love, mm -hmm. aren't you? Yeah. You can see by the scripture how people should be loving. 
Yeah. But they're not, brother, are they? No. They certainly are not. So many agendas. No way do they want to be. Yeah. Well, the, you can see the computer is all not functioning correctly because mm. they, they're not into Torah. Mm. They're into knowledge and worldly wisdom, but they're not into the Torah. No. No. So what do you think, brothers and sisters? You didn't know this is how, really, how Mark really feels behind the screen, did He doesn't know we're keeping this. So... I want everyone to see how he really feels, what he really feels like now. And the way he's going to do it, he's going to win. Mm. He's going to do it in love now. Yeah. He's not going to have all those feelings. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Why? Yeah, I can do that. No problem. Leave a 10. <laughs> hey? Leave a 10. Yeah. yeah, why not? Mm. You know? Because you don't have to have the false front, do you? No, not at all. And, and if anyone doesn't want to understand what you're experiencing and they want to twist it around and make it awful, well, they'd be wrong, wouldn't they? <laughs> well, that's just a normal day anyway. <laughs> no, but they'd be wrong, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, so, it's so important just to be thinking of other people. For above yourself, you know. Yeah. That thing, you yeah, that scripture, it's give up yourself, give up your life, such as it is. Mm -hmm. Who do you think your What do you think your life is? You know. We're just all very exciting. Because if you if you're listening to Yahusha, it's like what he did. Mm. But you got to go there. And have those experiences. Yeah. And if they want to have it, you just let them have it. Mm. Mm. They want to be determined. Where's it going to get them? They'll be in life's lessons and it'll just keep coming round and round yeah. until they learn yeah. it. They'll be groundhogging it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Groundhog day, you know? Yeah. So... Mm. It's all about love, and love is a behaviour, and it's a behaviour that we all should know and that we all should be doing and we all should agree on it. And we shouldn't be saying anything nasty about anyone. Everyone, as Lou says, is on different levels. None of us are clean. We're all growing. We have to be patient and kind. The more people that are willing to do that for each other, the more we're going to have his presence in the body. We all have to come together and become of one mind, like when, you know, man and woman are joined together. It's a marriage. So when we join together with him, it's a marriage. We have to come into his mindset. <clears throat> But I've never known Yahushua to have so many mindsets, have you? No. As far as I'm concerned, he's only got one. Mm. <laughs> and it's a behaviour as well. Mm. As you said, courteousness. Mm. There's none of that going on. No, no, no. no. You know, it's all nice in front, all nice at first and up front, and then all of a sudden the daggers start flying. You get accused of things. Yeah. And you're the villain. I don't mind being the villain. You know why? What did you say? I don't mind being accused of being a villain. You know why? Because your hoosh is moving. There's going to be an experience from what they're doing and saying, and he's going to win. Any reactions better than none at all? Oh, I don't know. Well, if there's a reaction, you you know, use your move, you know, moving and. Yeah, but no reaction is still a reaction. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Passive aggressive. Yeah, I'm the king of that. <laughs> no reaction is a reaction. Yes. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Yeah. I have a lot of fun with that one. Yeah. Because you can dance. 
You know, you can put a, you can sing and dance around them. Yeah. When they're not reacting. <laughs> that's right. In their reactions. Yeah. Yeah. Not impressed. It's really not reacting, but they are reacting. You're just silly, Chris. It's just silly. Yeah. What are you doing? What's, what, what are you singing for? What are you got to be happy about? <laughs> You're seeing the way? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Just face the truth about, you know, everyone should be loving, mate. Mm. You know, should be kind and encouraging and opening their heart and being genuine and real and, and also being, you know, intelligent mm. with the word mm. and Believing, you know, if you don't enter in and start believing and exercising your belief, you're not going to grow. You you're mean, not going to come into the love. You don't mean intelligent in what you know. You mean intelligent in the way you look at the word. Yes. Yes. You've gone frozen again. Back. What does back mean? Am I back? No, you're lying about like this. <laughs> I've frozen now. You're standing here with your eyes closed. Talk now. I'm talking. No, you're not. You're sitting there just glaring at me. <laughs> I feel like I've done something wrong. <laughs> oh, that's better. There we go. We're back. Mm. Are we? Uh, are we? <laughs> you're catching up. You're catching up. Catching up. Sky. No, it's the sky. It's the sky. It's always the sky. Must be time to go, Marky. All right, mate. How about that night? Wasn't that great? Oh, that was amazing. Enjoy <laughs> yourself? Yeah, <laughs> big time. Wasn't he incredible? He still is. Yeah. yeah. All right, mate. I love you very much. Yeah, love you too, mate. Oh. See you later. <laughs> Too much.